Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News. Now, the pleasure to be joined by, well, in my opinion, one of the most underrated coaches in the UK, soon to be rated, Will, Will Jones. Will, how are you today, mate, in a, in a very, very hot edge gym? How are you? Yeah, yeah very good. Just sweat boxing here today. It's, uh, when, it's like a greenhouse. It's when, uh, when the sun's on it, it's uh, stupidly hot. But when, uh, when it's winter, it's stupidly cold. So. But we're only here for five more weeks and then we're on to our new building. So, yeah, yeah, good today. Definitely, I mean, how is that, how is that transition going to the new gym? I hear you've just mentioned to me air conditioning. So I think it's, it's good for weight cuts, but it's not, not good for doing interviews, mate. Yeah, yeah. So there'll be, uh, there'll be air con in the new gym. It'll be a, a gym more specific to boxing. So this is what we've, what we've got upstairs here, but it's more catered to downstairs CrossFit, what we've got here. So our gym, the new one's going to be two rings, probably about 18 bags, big open floor. Like It's going to be a right old school boxing gym with a small weights area and a cardio area on the side. Um, something me and my partner um, and our mate uh, Billy Douglas and Liam Harrison uh, Liam Harris just working on and yeah five weeks time um, this is it the elite boxing and performance centre will be open so I'm looking forward to it I look forward to coming down there and doing some sessions mate uh, shout out to uh, our good friend Jake Dallison who's uh, been trying to get me to some sessions if it wasn't an hour eh, Jake I'd be down there more yeah. often as well Will I mean where else to start with your fighters and uh, the Mr Atomic himself Tom Welland I mean Coming on from strength to strength as well, and I have to bring up the fight with Marvin Solano, where when I looked at the bout sheet, I thought they'd made a mistake with the record that Tom was fighting. But I mean, five fights in an incredible, incredible um, progression Tom's showing as well. You yeah, see, Tom um, has a style that's made for pros. He's a strong puncher, likes to get on the inside, loves to have a, loves to have a tear up, loves finishing on a hook, Tom, and uh, was made for to be a pro boxer. I think got. Um, Got a good style, and he's very disciplined. He's a he's an utmost professional, and uh, for a young boy, 19 years old, to take on the challenges that he has already in his first five fights, you 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 got you got to, to recognise it. Like like you said, that Marvin Solano fight. When we got approached about that, because he's a replacement, it's such a big ask, a big risk. Because that Marvin Solano knows how to win, um, regardless of his, what his record says. He knows how to spoil the game, and he's fought the best. Like you said, is that, is that right? He's fighting Shabazz Masoud next, so. That's, that's the sort of people Tom's in with, right? So um, it's, it just shows how, how much Tom's coming along. And he's now, he's, like, in his last performance, you see, he's not just looking for the knockout, he's actually boxing smart. Like, Tom, Tom sometimes used to take, like, take a lot before he'd give a lot. Do you know what I mean? Take, take two, give back a big one. Like, and he liked to do that. But now he's, he's using his head, boxing well. And he's only 19, so there's no rush with Tom as well. So we've got, we've got, he's, got, uh, he's got his whole life in front of him. So as long as he's looked after by his, me, his management company and his promoters, you'll see you, there's a world champion in the making there. Definitely as well. One thing that I actually wrote down but forgot to ask Tom, and I just spoke to you this off camera. I mean, since the last time I come to the gym, Will, and it shows how it's been a long time, so apologies, he's the only really one left, I think, from, from the first collective of fighters who I interviewed. I mean, he's already got... I don't want to say it, he's only 19, I don't want to call him the senior member of the gym, but he, but he sort of is already, I mean, shows a testament to him and kind of the relationship that you have, that he's kind of stuck, stuck with you, stuck by your side, when obviously fighters come and go from gyms, it's, it, it happens, but yeah, but he's stuck by you and you've stuck by him and the, it's paying dividends as well, mate. Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom was with me as an amateur for two years, he was still boxing for Hot Box and West Ham at one point, but working with me at the same time, but... Um, yeah, he has. He's the, he's the only one still left from the originals. Him and Ade Amos, like uh, they're the they're the only ones left from the originals. Listen, it's boxing. People either do a couple of fights, you either do the whole career of you, or sometimes they do. I get halfway through a camp and feel like it's not right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 my doors are open. If I can gel with someone and I work with them, um, and if I can't, you can't. It's just one of them things. Like, like for example, me and Awara, we had an absolute great run. Like, I think six fights together, only one loss. Um, Great work together. I feel like working together, we brought the best of O'Hara out. And then, but then it just see it's cool. So there was no bad feeling. O'Hara was my friend. Um, always has been. He's there. When my daughter was born. Like he's a good friend. And that's how you should leave it. Like it's a business. Don't take it too personal. Do you know what I mean? But Tom is uh, for for our young. He's, he's good head on his shoulders, and he knows he wants to stay and carry it and see him through. He's doing well. Definitely as well. Just being to Tom about this, obviously, like there's a lot of talk about titles, especially when he's fighting, fighting um, the level of guys he is. Yeah. Is it? 
obviously, I don't want to say hold Tom back, but obviously, once you win that title, say he wins the title in his next fight, right? You can't then dip back to a six or an eight rounder. No, like, you have no. to go in. Is that the thing kind of holding him back from that title level just so when he wins that title, he's ready to stay in those, stay in that title contention? Yeah, that's it. Like, we've got, we've actually got a meeting this week about it. Like, um, do, do, do we do the step up now or do we wait a couple more fights? I, I personally have a couple more fights. I think it'll be great. Like, and then maybe start the new year and go for a title with Tom. I see out this year first, but it's all about timing and, and where Tom's so young. If we can do our best job to mould him instead of rushing and get, listen, it all looks great with belts, but if we can do our best job to mould him and make him the best he can be by the time he's 21, then the titles will come in. Do you know what I mean? So it's just no rush. He's, no, he's not against time. There's not time against him. He's, he's 19 years old. He's got his whole life in front of him. No, he definitely has as well. Next fight I want to talk about, mate, is uh, Sede Mama. Uh, not in the gym today, but um, but yeah, I mean, well, I was doing my research about a very interesting uh, woman as well. I mean, she's a director of a PR company, but she's also a boxer. I mean, but talk to me, for those who haven't watched Sede Unbox, I mean, what can they expect when they see it, when they see you guys team up? There's, um, there's not, I don't think there's many girls with her IQ. Like, so them's a very, very knowledgeable, smart fighter. She can read a fight, read someone's movement really well. And... So then um, it's, it's mad. I, I always gonna say, I'm gonna say, watch out for her left hand because she so then can can punch, she can jab, and she's got a left hook like a killer. Um, I'd say it's better than Tom's, and uh, she's a, she's very good. She's just given a chance at the moment. So then she's on a Ghanaian license. We're sorting out a UK license so she can come home and fight. But we're gonna get her around around the countries as well. Me and her management have been uh, talking and working together over it. So. Uh, but I, I've got no doubts we can get Sedem to some titles as well. She's a very, very, very good boxer. Definitely look, keep an eye out for Sedem as well. I mean, Thomas Galbraith as well. I've just seen him do some rounds with Sean Noakes ahead of Sean's English title fight against Indabasi. I mean, got a bit of a personality, does Thomas. I mean, uh, I asked him in our interview, I went, uh, he went, I want to fight at home back in Ireland. I said, where's home? He said, Any anywhere, anywhere in Ireland will do. So it's got a bit about him. But I mean, for those that haven't seen Tom Box, I mean, what can they expect when they watch him? July uh, 20, no? Yeah, July 27th, 27th uh, the Dean White show. Yeah, so he's a good boy, Tom. He's a great, uh, exciting fighter. Good with his lead hand. Doesn't need to use it more, but he's good with it when he does use it. Um, Tom's shown massive character being in the gym, especially in the late last year. A lot of um, stuff going on personally for him. He's shown great character, and I think he's that with that, it's helped him bring him on as a boxer. So um, very, very, very good easy to teach and uh, yeah once we get when we get the ball rolling with him you'll see an exciting Tom really definitely we look forward to see uh, Tom Thomas Galbraith's return as well I mean when uh, when I asked you who's going to be in the gym the other day mate you said Australian Kate I did have to do a bit more uh, research into Kate McLaren than that but Kate McLaren's joined the demo gym obviously um, Australian Australian fighter but really settling in she's excited to be here and she's back out on uh, Johnny Clark's uh, top tier show on September the 7th yeah yeah my friend John John's here today he's uh, give Kate the opportunity she come down for a trial um, like liked the guys in the gym like the coaches me and Simon working with her and uh, she wants to give it a go like uh, you can only admire someone that's come from somewhere as far away as Australia to take the plunge into the UK boxing scene but fair play like and um, I think Kate, Kate can do well I think she was a uh, style, she was boxing, um, not using her best attributes in her style. Like she likes to fight inside when she's probably one of the tallest welterweight girls I've ever seen. So we've tried and get her a bit longer, but don't want to change it too, com too much because we've still got to get her out. So we've got, that's a time thing, but um, she, she's come along really well, Kate. And yeah, she's one of the team now and she comes in and everyone just slates her. So she's, she's well made at home, you know what I mean? Definitely keep an eye out for the new queen at 147 as well. I mean, Kate Radomska as well. I mean, I don't think there's a fighter who has fought out of her weight and fought everyone as well, unlike uh, with Kate as well. But obviously settling into the settling into gym, I think you've had a couple of fights with her now. But um, I mean, fair to say, Kate Radomska will fight anyone from atom weight to super flyweight as well. With Kate, Kate came to me with a, from the beginning of her career. She's done a debut with me. We had four fights together and then Kate went back home to Ireland for a while. Um, and then box there and then come back after again after and uh, see Kate she's got balls of steel um, we'll take any fight like we got offered the Chloe Watson fight uh, on the Tuesday for the Friday night yeah yeah sweet I'll do it no problem so that's, that's the sort of person Kate is but only problem is a lot of Kate's fights have been because it's so scarce the, the categories uh, have been out of her out of her category so I now want because she's not got quite an even record but I now want Kate to do 
her weight and her weight only because I think at her weight she could do something she could get somewhere probably pick up an international title or something like that there's like to be real but where she's been fighting a lot of heavier girls and that you could you can see the difference especially the fight night against Chloe Watson there, there was a huge difference there so um, Kate at her weight will do alright I think Definitely as well. I want to move on to Will Oliphant. I mean, gutted. I've just been told the injury he's got. You're supposed to fight on the Fisher Babich card. I mean, that would have been massive. But major, major, major leg injury. I mean, I mean, but hopefully see the return of Will Oliphant. I mean, hopefully next year as well. Yeah, yeah. Will's been talking. He's on. He's on the mend now. He's uh, doing his weekend work, delivering parcels, and uh, jumped on a curb, rolled his ankle. Um, I think a bit of ligament damage. It'd be a long old path, but we'll get him back there. Do you know what I mean? And, Will's uh, will come with me for a bit. Went away, tried another trainer, and as you do, like it's a big, big step going to pro, and then come, he's back again, and it seems like it's gelled a lot better now. So, um, we'll, we, I'm looking forward to get Will out and getting Will busy, uh, especially next year. He's a, he's a good, big, big puncher. Definitely as well. I want to talk about uh, Frankie Senior. I mean, a fighter who, I mean, there was a smile on your face when I mentioned his name this morning. You're, you're excited about this young man. Just, just signed with Lee and let's go as well. I mean, but what can people expect when they see uh, the debut of Frankie Senior? Um, Frankie Senior is an exceptional, exceptional fighter. Um, Southpaw, tricky, confident, absolutely huge. But he is, he's just a cheeky chap as well. He's like a proper Jack the Lad and uh, I like him a lot. He's very disciplined. Since he's been with me, the, the, the way he's come on has been amazing. Um, it's a tribute to himself because he takes it so serious. But he's, he's only young. I, the minute I put up that he announced to me the amount of messages, I got, oh, it's Frankie, Frankie. So he's loved, and so he, he'll do well. And uh, I, I don't, I think we'll see Frankie possibly on Johnny Clark's show to start off. But I think a couple of performances by Frankie Senior and someone will snap him up because he is that good. And I've never. So a 17 year old who's turning 18 now and then he'll go for his license um, I've never seen someone punch so hard power is absolutely unbelievable and uh, that, that's, you can remember the name because you're going to know it for years to come definitely and what weight will Frankie be campaigning at? be campaigning at middleweight yeah. Perfect. I mean, who doesn't love a middleweight prospect? Yeah, yeah. A prospect in Britain as well. Uh, Mitchell Frearson as well. Good win on the. I mean, I don't know how it was for you uh, fighting at Crystal Palace, mate. But it was good for me watching. I mean, a good win. Good win on that show. Uh, I imagine wants to get back to that English title level that he uh, that he obviously lost to Brad Pauls, but Brad Pauls going from strength to strength was not a, not a loss that he's going to take like lightly on his record but uh, good things to come from Mitchell Frearson Do you know what with Mitch and the Brad Pauls fight it was quite hard because Mitch had just come to me before the Brad Pauls fight so that was our first fight together a big fight and Mitch boxed well tonight and just got caught and then uh, just couldn't couldn't bring himself back it was that was all but since since then we've had a few fights since and Mitch has just boxed to orders and been fantastic and like that I think the Crystal Palace fight showed like he started off first 30 seconds of the fight I was like not a war please not a war then Mitch started, Mitch started really boxing and look, dropping his hands, it really enjoying himself and had probably one of his best performances. And listen, Mitch is my old teammate from when we used to box together for Legends and it's actually quite fitting that like <clears throat> over time like, he's come to me as a coach so uh, uh, it's quite a good little story but I think Mitch can be, uh, I'd love to see Mitch get that southern area, like, get that shot uh, and I think like I think uh, George Liddard and Paul Gordon. Paul Gordon are fighting for it, I'd love to see Mitch get the winner and give it a go, do you know what I mean? It'd be great. See you later, brother. Oh <laughs> you won't think you won't think he's fighting in the Bassy next week, would you? I mean sure sure Sean sure Noakes English title uh, <laughs> and the new in the please do not watch this interview. Um, yeah, and uh, what's it? And then you've also got uh, Joshua Gustav. I mean I mean for those that don't know about Joshua Gustav, I mean what can they expect when they watch him fight? Absolute monster. Josh so Josh come from uh, Paul Kavanagh with Mitch. Uh, Paul Called, called it a day for the boxing, went and done a security work over Dubai. Got in touch with me and said, Look, I'm going to give the boys to you. And absolutely, Paul's a good friend, a good guy. Um, Josh, uh, Josh Gustav, a huge puncher. All he needed to do was learn about setting up. And uh, same with Tom Wellen when I had Tom Wellen at first. Learn about setting up, set up, set up, set up, and that big, big punch will land. It's all good being the greatest puncher, but if you can't set up right and land it, it's no good. So. And this is what Josh Gustav's like. And I've, I've really gelled, like, our first trial, couple of trial days, we gelled like that. And uh, a really, really good prospect. So I think it'll be out before the end of the year. Um, be campaigning at middle. Um, very, very strong puncher. And collectively, like, puts them together well, maintaining the power. So 
he's going to be very exciting I think he's, he's with Steve Goodwin so he'll be out on there soon but I, I, I think someone like Josh Gustav has made for big screen as well he won the um, uh, is that uh, SAS program? He won. Uh, oh, SAS. Who dares win? Yeah, yeah. He won that. He won that about two years ago. I didn't even know. He, he's telling me the other, uh, other day, and I was like, oh, fucking hell. He must have some mental attitude. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, you can't knock him. He's a he's a good guy, and I, some people like that are good to work with. Definitely. I mean, I've met Ann Middleton once, and I think if you can uh, if you can deal with him for long periods of time, you're going to go far in the boxing game. It's fair to say. My final one for me, Will. Um, some people don't know that you uh, you were in the corner for Malik Zanad against Dimitri Bivol. I mean, a lot of people weren't really giving Malik a, Malik a chance in that fight, but uh, he, he did lose, it's fair, fair to say. But, I mean, he gave it a proper, proper good go. I mean, how was that whole experience for you with, with Malik and how did you kind of get that opportunity as well, mate? So, when I trained Hamza uh, a few years ago... Hamza, Hamza Shiraz, Shiraz, yeah. yeah. Uh, Malik come down with uh, some of the team, done a, bit, a little bit of pads together and... Uh, Years gone by, um, I got a phone call off my friend and said, uh, "Listen, they're looking at um, this guy for Bivol's opponent. Could he train at your gym?" I was like, "Yeah, no problem. Would like how would has him? No problem." He come down. I was like, "Fuck, oh, it's you. How you doing?" Like had a chat and then uh, started training. And he's asked me to come out there and corner him. He's with uh, Buddy McGurk at first, um, and uh, yeah, I, I end up cornering for the fight. It was uh, a surreal experience. What they've done over there is amazing for boxing. Um, a lot of people misconceive that all the boxing is now just going to be over there. It's not. It's all over the world, but they're promoting Saudi. Do you know what I mean? So and Riyadh season. So it's going to be. It's going to be great. It's going to be great for everyone in boxing, not just the fighters that are up there. Every, everything's going to get, gain something from it. Even Saudi itself is a beautiful country. If that country could get built up and uh, get the the visitors needed, what's it called? Um, Tourists. Tourists. That's the one. The tourism needed. It'd be a great country to go to. Do you know what I mean? So, um, Malik Zinad uh, Bivol. It just made me realise. So that's like made me realise how good Dimitri Bivol is. Watching him close up, being in the corner opposite him. That guy. Had, uh, listen, Malik done really well first few rounds. Um, worst thing he done, I think, was bash heads with Bivol because I think he made Bivol go up a gear. Um, but. Bivol just downloads data off, off you in the early rounds. He's just watching, watching, watching. Like I, I was really um, excited to see how, uh, really interested to see how he's, he's, he's re- like just measuring that left hook. And then when the time's right, boom, didn't miss. Every time didn't miss. And that's how he got the drop on Malik and then ended up stopping him. And listen, an exceptional fighter, probably the best in the world at his weight. Um, hopefully him and better be able to get it on and then we'll, we'll, we'll see it. No, definitely as well. And I think it was fair play to uh, Malik. You brought the brought the best out of Bivol that night and I feel, I feel like you've got, you've got to give credit to that because like we were saying off camera I feel like people thought when that fight started so Malik got dropped early but then Malik sort of played on the jab and I think people were looking a bit like another, is this going to be another Bivol points win and I think Malik brought something out of Bivol that thought yeah, I'll step on the gear now and teach you a lesson and, and that's what he did and I think Bivol needed that stoppage for himself as well do you know what I mean so I think it was great I think it was great um, unreal experience love to go back there again hopefully can take Tom Welland over there in a few years' time. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure. I'm sure Tom Welland will relish the chance to uh, to have a f- Saudi fight day as well. I mean, Will, that was my final one, mate. Have you got any final words for? I mean, the fans who are, are big fans of all the all the fighters in your gym, mate. Uh, just listen. Watch out for the stable. We're building. We're moving to our new um, premises soon. Uh, we've got Rush Green ABC. Our amateur amateur club's going to be there with us. Elite AB uh, Elite Boxing Performance Centre got the best uh, strength and conditioning people like our open day will be soon so I'll invite yourself down to come please do you. I'll be there yeah 100% and uh, it's just going to go strength from strength to strength the gym and like listen what, I've got a shout out to Johnny I'm not, not just because he's here but working with people like Johnny who've put people like Kate have come over and he's took a chance to put her on his show it's a massive thing a lot, a, lot, a lot of promoters would take that chance and Johnny's a credit to himself what, how long have you been doing it now John? A couple, yeah, literally a couple of minutes, and uh, he's made a dent in uh, the small hall slash onto a big screen boxing. He's on there, mate, and uh, he's gonna go. He's gonna go far, John. And, and it was all from an idea down here, wasn't it, John? A chat, a chat on the box, a chat on the boxing ring, having a chat, and uh, yeah. So it's brilliant. It's brilliant, and it's a good, good circle of friends that we've got in boxing, and everyone helps each other out. Do you know what I mean? So can't argue with that. No, definitely. And uh, I mean, the show with George Liddon and Jimmy Sainz was massive. And that September the 7th show with Kate McLaren that Will mentioned is a, is an excellent fight card. Finley, uh, Finley James from Mark Tibbs' gym. And then you've got uh, Lely Butterjig and Elliot Whale uh, headlining the fight, headlining for an IBO European as well. So it's a great fight. Johnny, I'm doing your job for you, mate. <laughs> Will Jones, thank you very much, mate. Really appreciate Pleasure. that. Thanks Cheers. For coming down, mate.